Fuel behind crude's run has been a huge basis for debate as investors worry over consumption uh, growth. Here now with his outlook, uh, Matt Simmons, chairman of Simmons & Company International and author of Twilight in the Desert, The Coming Oil Shock in the World Economy. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you? Good. You must feel like uh, Nostradamus. What, when, when did you publish that book? It was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? No, it was actually three years ago on Tuesday. Three years. Oil, fact, was, I, oil was where? I think oil was about 45 to 50. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and the conventional wisdom was, was it was far too high. It was because of 27. Well, that doesn't. I think they just forgot. Yeah, that doesn't mean if, it, 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 because you've been so right uh, so far. Doesn't mean you just get a free pass on everything, though, Matt. I, I, my one question I need to ask that I maybe you know the answer to this is that we seem to to, to think that the Saudis uh, um, are overstating the amount of oil that they have, and, and that we we really shouldn't believe what they say because they're trying to fool us there. And I just can't understand why it's in their interest to fool us on the high side when they could charge more if they would lowball it because the supply demand uh, would be more favorable. Why are they constantly no. telling us that they have more than they actually have? You know, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the, to the leadership of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and uh, I, I think they were basically hoodwinked by the, by the major oil companies 40 years ago when they didn't know anything about oil. And they basically were told that they had unlimited amounts of oil that would never run out. Uh, and, 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 there's, and it was really finally a small band of people that, within Saudi Arabia that, that realized that these oil fields were getting old that started the whole process of bringing high technology and to try to make sure that they basically kept it going as long as they did. So I think that it would be, it's very convenient for us to blame the Saudis. I think that the, within, within Saudi Arabia there are some unbelievably optimist, overly optimistic proponents that's a whole different issue, uh, but I think that why they believe that they were they were educated by us, so it was our fault. All right, let me ask you one other uh, question that that people write in about: 80 percent of the earth covered by uh, by water. How do we know that that there's not 10 times as much oil? Admittedly, hard to get, but at 140 dollars, we could probably afford it. How do we not know that there's there's huge reserves that we don't even know about that would throw a wrench into the whole peak oil theory. Uh, we, ac we actually don't know because until, we f until an oil field is discovered, you, you can make up all sorts of theories. But we are so utterly out of, of offshore drilling rigs, and you can only look at the intense amount of rigs that Petrobras is trying to hire over the next decade, that, that even if there is stuff out there, we've run out the clock. Uh, we don't have any way to find it. We don't have any way to produce it. And, and, and to offset a decline rate of, of, of you know, as modest as maybe 4 or 5% per year, you have to add a new Iran. The decline rate probably is going to end up averaging 10 to 15% per year over the next decade. So the, the, you literally just couldn't find enough to actually keep flat, no, let so, alone grow. So PICO is, is not that the planet's out of hydrocarbons. It's that... No, it's just that we couldn't, we couldn't get them out of the ground. If we could, if we could convert ourselves into microbes and go back, you know, and, and live inside oil fields, there's going to be a lot of oil left behind. So oh, we'll never run out. out. We're just basically. <laughs> yep. They're working on technology to do that exact, that very thing. Yeah, that's the optimist theory. We're working on technology. <laughs> the problem is no one's actually doing it. All right, Matt. Uh, so let's say that we, you know, we acknowledge these things. Then let's start thinking though about how habits could change in this country in terms of SUVs, and, and the U.S. is still a huge user. So if we did have a, let's just for argument's sake, say we have a 10% decline in, in the oil that the U.S. Uh, uses, and is it, and it, maybe we find a little bit more in different places. Couldn't the pen, couldn't that buy us some time to where 140 or $200 oil isn't, isn't in the cards? You know, anything's possible that's not likely. You know, the, 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 uh, having spent 40, 39 years in investment banking, uh, it's always very, very important to be realistic and come up with a scenario that works versus one that you'd like to have work. So, the, uh, you know, we, we, if, we, if we dropped our oil use by 10% in the, just in the United States, that would, we, we consume 20, 20 to 21 million barrels a day of oil. So that would be 2 million barrels a day of oil that the world doesn't need. On the other hand, China over the last year and a half increased by two million barrels a day. So well, this is a global problem. One great thing about you, Matt, is that whenever you're on the show, uh, you definitely evoke some, some viewer reaction. 
we'll inevitably get some questions about how you're, how you're positioned, how you profit from furthering this message. Can you just address that? Well, I, I can tell you how much I spend <laughs> addressing this, which is a fair amount of money. Uh, yeah, I, I have a I have a, a, a very significant portfolio that I've, that I've you know built up over the last 25, 30 years in in energy stocks because I think it's the only way that that anyone's going to make any money. But the uh, the idea that somehow or another I'm doing this to peddle my 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 position is preposterous. So I, other than a few modest changes, I bet, in fact the last the last big stock buy I did was buying steel stocks about six weeks right. ago when I realized that we were running out of steel. So then it's a, it's a combination of the, the incremental demand from China and, and India that we didn't have 20 years ago, let's say, along with the very real possibility that these these fields are, are getting old and aren't going to produce as much. So it's those two factors. Well, Be because Matt, yeah, and you, also you, the fact that... Go ahead. Also the fact that our, our usable inventories of diesel and gasoline are the lowest we've ever had. So we have a very the reason gas diesel prices are now almost a dollar a gallon over gasoline is that we have very limited amounts of spare diesel. It's not that there's no, there's there's no speculation on diesel. The, uh, we we we're we're in a tight market. What we need to worry about is not high prices but shortages. No, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. It's it, it just we, then we just have to come to grips with. It's just in, in the investment world to say it's different this time is always, you know, you, you kind of go, Ooh, you know, when you hear it's different this time. And yeah. every other time with any commodity, you know, the, the demand destruction combined with how everybody wants to run out. I, I'm thinking about drilling somewhere for if you can get 130 or 150 or 200. Yeah. Everybody wants to find yeah. it and everybody cuts back. And usually those two factors get us back to where we were. And it's like self-equilibrate. So we have to accept that it's different this time. Well, that's the, the economists ought to basically be embarrassed because and the energy economists are the worst of the lot. They, they basically, you know, kept saying it's different this time. Uh, you know, 10 years ago when oil prices were 10, they said it's going to go to 5. It's different this time. So I think that they ought to basically say we were wrong. We, were wrong. we had no idea what we were talking about and just get off the air. <laughs> All right. On that note. All right, Matt. Thank you. And we'll see you again You're soon. Very I have a feeling that uh, we're going to need you to yes. talk to you. Yep. And then again and yep. again. Well, it's cheap. <laughs> well, prices are very cheap.